since the man destined to become the next Odin feels reluctant to embrace his fate, the old crone has compelled you all to go on a Norse vision quest. The man will be acting as Beowulf and you will be his traveling companions as he reenacts the epic poem. Og. I will be the herald. Jamie. I shall be hunter. You have my bow. Garrett. And my axe. John. I hate all of you. Garrett. Actually I will be a tracker. Iris. I shall be a shield maiden. For anyone who did not specify a role, it will be assumed you will be one of the warriors by Beowulf's side. You begin in the feast hall of a humble village. The king called forth Beowulf because he has heard prophecies about how he is fated to slay the Grendel's mother. You are welcomed generously and are offered a feast. Blue. I drink and eat happily not caring how drunk I get. Iris. I choose not to drink mead. I opt for goat's milk instead. Og. I hear she was raised by cowardly shepherds this one. A few of the Vikings snicker at the little shield maiden drinking goat's milk like a child. Iris. What? No. I am drinking fermented goat's milk. Game master why you are being such a jerk? You never specified fermented goat's milk. You simply said goat's milk. Jamie. It's true. When you are not specific the master will assume whatever he feels like. The king approaches Beowulf and thanks him for coming. He begins to speak of the terrible creatures that plague his people such as the glowworm and the grendel. Blue. I drop my pants and see if I am able to piss straight. Og. Raro. Blue. If I fail to piss straight that means I am too drunk for action. Game Master how is my stream? You successfully piss straight dot R. Blue. Excellent. I tell Beowulf I am ready for battle and say let's go forth and kill us a glow worm. Beowulf likes your enthusiasm. He interrupts the king's story and bolts out the door with his axe. John. You idiots go stop our lord from getting himself killed. I will stay behind and actually talk to the king. Beowulf is sprinting towards the darkness at a scary pace. No doubt if he maintains this speed he will be completely worn out by the time the fighting starts. He turns to you Plu, and says, if you beat me to first blood, I will give you two wenches. Plu. Oh boy wenches. I sprint harder. Og. As Herald I try to keep up with our lord. Jamie. I try to restrain our lord. Garrett. I attempt to trip up our lord and then tie his legs together. You successfully trip up your lord. He fails to take notice at your efforts and keeps struggling despite the lot of you dog piling and trying to hold him back. My lord. Please. Listen for a moment. Beowulf finally responds to your pleas and asks why his legs are tied up. John. I finally catch up to the rest of the group to give them an idea on what we are fighting. Iris. Oh good. Now we can plan an ambush for the creature rather than charging madly into battle. How far is he? I'd say 200 feet. Oh. No. Jamie. I jam one of the torches I brought into the ground so we have light during combat. The glow worm is now roughly 100 feet away. Iris. So what's the plan? Og. We fight and don't die. The glow worm rises from the earth. It is a monstrous creature that is roughly 150 feet long. It has a number of tiny appendages for locomotion and two massive claws that have been the death of many a local warrior. Blue. I run up the worm and head but the worm in the eye. The worm winces in pain and is flat out shocked by your tactic. On the other hand, Beowulf swings in effectively at the beast. Garrett. I use my fire magic to launch an enchanted arrow into the already injured eye of the worm. You are the least honorable Vikings ever. The additional damage from the magical arrow causes the worm's eye to pop and a grotesque sizzling can be heard from the socket. Jamie. I try to fire arrows at the other eye and hope we can blind the creature. Your attacks fail to do the decisive damage to ruin the other eye. 
Beowulf charges up the worm and slams down his axe on the snout of the worm. The worm claws at your lord and attempts to swallow him. Beowulf does not seem to resist. He seems willing to charge head on literally. Og. I hurl my axe at the roof of the worm's mouth so our lord has something to hold onto so he doesn't get swallowed by the beast. Despite your efforts Beowulf continues to be in danger of being swallowed. John. I charge in after our lord and try to save him. Unfortunately you do not get there in time and Beowulf gets swallowed. John. I will allow myself to be swallowed and try to cause the worm to throw up. Og. I use my standard and attempt to stab it into the belly of the worm. Your efforts to upset the worm's stomach are successful and it begins to heave violently. Beowulf and John are unceremoniously forced back out. The worm's sudden movements cause it to land with all its weight on the standard. Roll to see the damage your standard causes as the worm puts its weight into it. Og. My roll is pitiful. In that case, the standard fails to slip into the worm's internal organs and instantly kill it. The standard snaps instead. Garrett. I run onto the worm's head and use my rope to create reins. I attempt to wrangle it. Since the rest of your party is attacking the worm ruthlessly, any attempts to calm the glow worm to make it willing to let you ride it are unlikely to succeed. In fact, it turns and begins to flee. Og. I use what remains of my standard and catapult myself up to the worm's head. Jamie. I use my hatchet to try to climb up the worm. But alas I roll poorly and get my weapon stuck. Blue. I stab my sword into the head of the beast to create a handle. Iris. I steal Jamie's hatchet and use it to climb up the worm properly and leave Jamie in the dust. Jamie. Wait what? That's gay. Iris. I apologetically throw Jamie a rope. Jamie. I will never forgive you I will kill your character and the character after that and then I will follow you through campaigns just to kill your characters or ruin your game master attempts. Those who are on the worm's head best get ready to hold on tight. John. I activate my run of anger and grab the wire by the tail. I make many raises and with all my might prevent the worm from retreating. I go further and swing the worm and slam him against the ground. Hum. Those who are on the worm, you have until John's next turn to react or you will get crushed beneath the weight of the worm as John swings it around. Og. I jump off the worm and make a dance roll midair to retrieve our Lord Zax on the head of the beast. Garrett. It's okay, I will ignore gravity by running up and down the worms to avoid getting crushed. Blue. I swing around with the makeshift reins Garrett made earlier and tie the rope around the worm's neck. Og. I will help Blue secure his impromptu Garrett. The worm begins to get swung back and forth. The Garrett, Plu and August have ready begin to strangle it. It begins to get panicked. You may all make a perception check. John. I succeed. What do I see? The worm is trying to unfurl wings that are hidden in its massive claws in hopes of flying away and escaping from you lot. By now Beowulf has finally recovered from being vomited out of the worm and begins to stab at it like a madman. John. I swing with increased fury. Og. I have a most cunning plan. Plu I require your assistance and possibly some assistance from the archers. I hurl my bottle of mead into the air making many raises for style so that it slows dramatically and begins to ignore the laws of time and space. Game master, do I make enough raises? Yes. You have made enough raises to allow your bottle of mead to slow dramatically midair. Og. Okay. Blue, I need you to hurl my torch into the air in the same way and line it up in such a way so our allies can fire through the flame and into the mead. Blue. I throw the torch into the air and make raises for style in the same way as Og did for his mead. It's all you Jamie. Jamie. I fire an arrow through the flame of the torch and make it hit the cork of the bottle and pop it off gracefully and make a mead mist. Garrett. I fire an enchanted fire arrow through the mead mist. 
The mead mist consumes the head of the worm and your enchanted arrow creates a massive air fuel explosion which engulfs Beowulf amongst other things but don't worry it doesn't harm him much. It simply gives him a cinematic backdrop. The claws of the worm finally fall limp. The commotion of the fight draws out curious onlookers from the nearby village. They see your lord battling heroically and blooded from stabbing at the corpse of the worm madly. The people are impressed by what they see. Og. I use my oratory skills and try to make our lord look like he contributed to the combat rather than be a horrible handicap. John. I use my skilled skill and tell the tale epically and dramatically unlike Og's mediocre story. The king is impressed with Beowulf and gives him the sword of his father's as a reward for slaying the glowworm who has taken many of his warriors' lives. Congratulations team! You have successfully reenacted a chapter of the Beowulf story as reimagined by Michael Bay. Based on a true story.